اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ان شاء الله within this chapter we want to look at the different types of fasting different lenses we can look at the degrees of fasting with you know the first of which that we begin to understand that when someone comes and says you know that I'm fasting within the holy month of Ramadan, one begins to analyze that there is an aspect of a jurisprudential fast, which means it is the lowest level, first and foremost, that a person can be fasting in Ramadan. And that is to refrain from food, drinks, and all that that can break your fast within the holy month of Ramadan. Now, just to put it into perspective that if a person, let's say a female, was to fast within the holy month of Ramadan, that she can refrain from food and drink and all that acts that can break your fast or invalidate your fast, but at the same time can not necessarily be wearing a hijab in the correct manner. Still, her fast will be accepted, jurisprudentially speaking. As a man, he can refrain likewise from food and drink and all that which invalidates the fast. But at the same time, while he's refraining, he could potentially be listening to that which is haram, from music, from gossip from backbiting and still jurisprudentially speaking his fast would be accepted but you begin to analyze that all of a sudden food or refraining from food and drink is a very low level of fasting we begin to understand that Rasulullah one day was passing by a woman that was speaking ill of her maid and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to her by offering her food. She says, oh Rasulullah, I'm fasting. He says, you're fasting, but you can speak ill towards your maid. Giving us an understanding that fasting is not just about refraining from food and drinks. No, there's a deeper level that we need to understand. And that takes us to the next level, which is ethical fasting, if we can look at it in that aspect. Ethical fasting is first and foremost obviously refraining from food and drinks like that within the jurisprudential fast. However, you also refrain from all that which is haram as well. Meaning, let's say with outside the month of Ramadan, that backbiting is haram and without a shadow of doubt. But within this holy month, for you as an ethical faster, it becomes even more so that I would not even be in places that this would take place. That I make sure that this is haram for me extra within this holy month because I am fasting. That particular place would play haram music. That I make sure, normally I would not go to such places. However, in the month of Ramadan, I make it more so haram that I even think about going towards those places. Now that can be looked at to be an ethical fast, you know, taking a perspective from the Ahlul Bayt, there's a tradition that states, as followers of Ahlul Bayt, there's a tradition that says, on a normal day, let alone Ramadan, it says a sin is a sin. A sin is a sin, meaning a sin is ugly. It says, but from you being a follower of Ahlul Bayt, that sin is worse. Why? Because when a person sees you sinning, they will look at you to be a follower of Ahlul Bayt. That will negatively impact their vision of what Ahlul Bayt is because of your act of sin. On the flip side, the tradition tells us a good deed is good. However, coming from you, it's better. Why? Because in the same notion that a sin alludes to the fact of Ahlul Bayt and their vision, likewise, 
a good deed would have people looking at you to be a follower of Ahlul Bayt and having them thinking very highly of those people that you gained your knowledge and application from. Take that into perspective when we're going into this holy month of Ramadan and we begin to analyze that this, this is another level which is an ethical fast that I want to perfect every single organ that I have. That I want to make sure that normally outside the month of Ramadan that my eyes may see that which is haram. In Ramadan, I make it more so on myself that I make sure that this eye not only doesn't see haram, but I utilize this eye only in that which is good. Because we can look at we can look at things that are halal on one scale, we can look at things which are haram on the other scale. Then some people may say that, well, all of a sudden there's this aspect where if I look at particular, let's say a book or I'm reading, or I look at scenery, not necessarily reward or a punishment. However, the people that want to really gain from the month of Ramadan, they say that I want to utilize every moment within the holy month of Ramadan to benefit. This time that my eye isn't being utilized for that which is good, that I'm refraining from haram, I want to make sure these eyes look and remember Allah, whether I be reading Quran, whether I look at nature, I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it, I read a book to educate myself, to gain closeness towards Allah by elevating myself in knowledge. You can be utilized. When you find in every single organ this can take place. Imam Zain al-Abideen says very beautifully to elaborate on this particular point. That, you know, sometimes in Ramadan we'll find ourselves not utilizing the time correctly. That year we've prayed that we've recited the one chapter of the Holy Qur'an. But then you'll find many of us, especially the males, will find ourselves going to hang out, as we say. Or we call it waste time with our fellow brothers. But as Imam Zain al-Abidin says in Dua Abu Hamza al-Thumali, he says a very beautiful line. When he's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not looking towards him, he says, Ya Allah, he says, لَعَلَّكَ رَأَيْتَنِي آلِفَ مَجَالِسُ الْبَطَّالِينَ فَبَيْنِي وَبَيْنَهُمْ خَلَّيْتَنِي Imam Zain Abidin says, Oh Allah, why is it that you've looked away from me? Is it because of this? Is it because of this? Is it because of this? Is it because you saw me being in the company of people? Battalin means there's nothing of benefit in the gathering. It means I'm not discussing anything of benefit to me or to my akhirah. Just hanging out for the sake of hanging out. We could be discussing the history of a football team, for example, or who won the races on the weekend. You know, uh, whatever it may be, it's not nothing that is beneficial to me. You know, that majalis Imam Zain Abidin refers to saying, "Oh Allah, did you look away from me because I am in such gatherings that are of no benefit?" So you left me in those gatherings, so I may not gain closeness towards you. So in every single aspect of your life, there is a value for the time that you spend, especially in Ramadan. Ramadan, not just the hours, but the minutes, every second, your breath. When you're sleeping is worship. When you're awake, it's tasbih. Everything, you have an opportunity to gain as much as you are able to within this month. So the understanding and the opportunity within this month in the second level is to utilize every organ in the best way and not waste any opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Let's reconnect with family members. Let's try to perfect ourselves in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's make sure that everything that we look at, we look at that which is halal. We find in a beautiful tradition, there is a story that is given to us to showcase to us the importance of every single glance that you have, every moment that you utilize your organs for that which is halal and that which is haram. They say a man came into the village and as this scholar came into the village, at those times people would always either gather in the mosques or they would be a particular shelter for the travelers. 
So he says, I stayed overnight in a mosque. When I entered this village, I saw an elderly man, but he was insane, playing with the children, annoying people. So we stayed away from him. He says, when I was inside the mosque, overnight, he says, at the door of the mosque, there's usually a lantern that's lit, so people can walk in and walk out. He says, I saw a man enter in the very early hours of the morning. So he says, I, I wasn't asleep, so I followed this man. So I saw this person is making wudu. When he's making wudu, it, it was wudu that was, he says, I was a scholar, but he was, he was doing it more perfect than I was. With its mustahabbat, its recommended acts, the words that need to be uttered. So I'm looking at the person, it was the same person that was insane when we entered this village, that was annoying the children, annoying the people. He says, but I didn't look insane. So he says, I stayed in the darkness, waiting and watching. So he says, he began to pray, and he says, he's doing the mustahabbat. He says, praying, and he's weeping within his salat. He goes, this person isn't insane. He goes, he's more sane than me. He does more worship than I do. So he says, I'm going to wait. He says, as soon as he finished his salat, he says, I grabbed him by the shoulder. As soon as I touched him, he returned back towards his insanity. And he continued to be insane until I'm telling him, please, I saw you, I saw you pray, I saw you make wudu, I saw you uttering the words. And he kept, and he continued to be insane. And he says these words, he says, I said to him, by the person that has made you become insane, you have to tell me. So he says, all of a sudden, this person came out of that state of insanity and he says, إِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ He says, I'll tell you my story. He says, my story is that I was one of the close ones, meaning that I had a close connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, so much so that he said to me that I want to bless you by you being able to see the Imam Sahib al-Asri wa zaman And he says, whether it be in Alam al ruya or in one way or another, you'd see the Imam of your time. So he says, I reached that level. He says, one day as I left the mosque, he says, my eye fell on a woman that wasn't wearing appropriate garments. He says, but I looked at that woman with an eye not, was, that was not modest. So it's just a few moments. He says, that night I prayed, finished praying, didn't see the imam. One week, two weeks, he says, I began to, I began to really be afraid I'm not going to be able to see the imam. In which I gained the message, Satan saying to me, that, oh, Shaykh, do you think that the eye that sees that which is unlawful can see the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Beauty in this aspect, meaning the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa sama So taking this example of the levels of fasting, we need to understand that we need to perfect each and every organ in order for us to gain that which we want to gain, to see the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third level that you can attain from fasting in the holy month of Ramadan is the one that is the true fast, in which, as the scholars say, you fast from everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That your sole focus and nothing but is Allah. That you focus on that one person that you are in love with that you speak to him, that nothing else matters in the world except that connection between you and your beloved, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is an, an aspect that we can't speak about. Rather, you need to experience that connection for yourself. So inshallah, we've understood that there are different levels of fasting in this chapter and that we need to gain not the first and the lowest level by refraining, but rather having at least the ethical fast within the holy month of Ramadan, insha'Allah, and we can develop from that and perfect each and every organ within our body and create that connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.